Hey y'all, it's Bianca with Lotus Siri Designs back with another project I've painted. Let's go through how I achieved this pretty in pink look on this tall dresser. Oftentimes we show people before pictures of our furniture, but the befores don't really show what condition the piece is in. All of this ornate filigree that I'm ripping off, it was broken and fallen off already. Once I removed all those pieces, I removed the hardware and upon opening the drawer discovered, ugh, contact paper. I hate contact paper. I will be using acetone to remove that nasty sticky residue from the contact paper. I pour a generous amount on and using a scraper along with a paper towel, remove that nasty adhesive. Tip, make sure you are wearing a respirator and gloves when using this product. Once all the sticky was gone, I sanded out the drawer with 220 grit sandpaper. Doing this is gonna level out the grain and also, when I polish the drawers later, will make it a nice, smooth, new looking surface. In this clip, I am removing the existing finish off the drawers because I am going to do a whitewash. Doing a whitewash is super simple. Off camera, I mixed together white water-based paint with two parts water. I spread it onto my surface in the direction of the grain and I keep it wet with a mister bottle so that my paint does not dry out on me. Then I wipe away the excess using a pad, you can also use a sponge, you can use a rag, whatever you fancy. Basically, this technique is allowing me to faux stain the drawer and allow that wood grain to peek through since the design was so beautiful on this dresser. What I did not capture on camera is me cleaning the piece as well as sanding the piece. It is important to note that I sanded the piece prior to doing any of the decorative embellishments. My reason for this is because I am now adding Would You Bend to the dresser and I definitely prefer to apply my Would You Bend on sanded wood rather than on top of the existing finish. I have this theory that my applique will stick better. So if you're new to Would You Bend or have not used it, I will just give you a quick run through on how to apply them. You can warm up these appliques with a heat gun or hair dryer, and doing so allows you to conform the shape of the Would You Bend to your substrate. To attach Would You Bend, wood glue is recommended. Evenly distribute your glue and place your Would You Bend in your desired spot. Once I have my Would You Bend in place, I like to then warm it up so that I can apply some pressure, making sure that there are no gaps between the applique and my surface. Once cool, Would You Bend moldings harden and retain their shape. Next, let's seal this baby for tan and bleed. My go-to product for wood bleed is shellac. This product has not failed me and has proven successful in even the most bloodiest of woods. For example, your mahoganies, cherries, redwoods, etc. I apply the shellac in quick, evenly distributed strokes, making sure I do not overwork it. Typically, as I did with this piece, I come through and do a second coat once the first is dry. Shellac is not something you want to breathe in, so make sure you are wearing a respirator when using this product. Also, when it comes time to clean your brush, soak your brush in a cup with one part ammonia and one part water. The ammonia will separate the shellac from your brush, making cleanup easy. Finally, we can get to the paint process. I am using Zinzer's 123 water-based primer in gray for adhesion. Once my two coats were dry, I then used white water-based enamel paint for the drawers. For those wondering, I use a Graco HVLP sprayer. I bought this sprayer maybe four years ago and it's still going strong, worthy investment. On the base of the dresser, I am spraying Annie Sloan's Scandinavian Pink. I've never used this paint before and it was definitely an interesting experience. I let everything dry overnight and then the next day came in with Prima's Anthurium Transfer. I picked up this transfer at a local retailer and thought it would pair nicely with the Scandinavian Pink. This particular brand of transfers is very easy to use. I just put my transfer in the place that I want it, cut the transfer in between the drawers as it is easier to remove the outer overlay in smaller sections. Then using either the stick that the transfer comes with or the transfer tool, I simultaneously rub along the outer overlay and pull it back to reveal the transfer underneath. Even though it looks like I'm going very fast in this video, I do this slowly and carefully because I don't want to rip the overlay off prematurely and therefore rip the transfer underneath. Tip, gently rub your hand over the transfer to make sure there are no air bubbles and if you do find some, lance them with an X-Acto knife or needle to release the air. To seal, I applied a few coats of water-based polyurethane. 
Let's do something with these Would You Bend details. I'm using Rub and Buff's Antique Gold, which is a gilding wax, to highlight the filigree. In this case, I am using an artist's brush to apply it. However, sometimes I will use my finger or even a chip brush, as you see that I am doing here with the hardware. After I clean the hardware, of course, I am using that same technique and rub and buff to polish it. Tip. Make sure you use a clean rag to buff your gilding wax. Doing so removes excess as well as brightens the sheen. The nice thing about rub and buff, it dries instantly, which allows me to put my hardware on right away. Tip. Mineral spirits removes gilding wax. So if you have accidentally colored outside of the lines, don't worry, it's not a big deal. You can wipe away your mistakes using mineral spirits. And she's done. She's not my normal grunge style. However, her solid colors mixed with the transfer and whitewash drawers is a nice change from my norm. Thank you for coming alongside this journey with me and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.